So we decided to put this tool that is a web page where we have all this information in a very dynamic way where you start clicking and you start learning about the process. So you, you want to eliminate the mycoplasma. This is the roadmap. So this is the journey. You need to start for a very clear beginning where you need to justify why you want to do it. And you, know, you start designing the tool. So, so you start from there and you finish to day 280 or something like that, where you are very close to elimination. So everything in between is included in this tool. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest Swine Health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me in our podcast studios this week is Dr. Eduardo Fano. Dr. Fano is the Director of Health with Pipestone Latin America. Eduardo, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. If you would, let's start off with a little introduction for the audience. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I'm the director of health of Pipes in Latin America. I started in this position seven months ago. Uh, I've been in the industry for 27 years in different roles, um, academia, um, technical service, um, technical marketing, um, marketing, um, production, and uh, as well uh, working as a health insurance um, director in, in a generic company. So I've been really blessed in having all this opportunity for all these roles in this uh, wonderful industry. Yeah. Well, Eduardo, over the course of your career, I know you've seen um, mycoplasma change a lot. And I, you, and I know you've studied mycoplasma a lot. You've, you've championed a lot of the change that we've seen, right? Uh, many years ago, mycoplasma was better known as enzootic pneumonia. Um, and that's probably still a good nickname for it. But the reality is for a lot of producers, they've decided not to make it enzootic anymore, right? Enzootic means all the pigs have it. Well, producers have decided to eliminate it, um, you know, and from individual farms, we've been successful, which means eradication at regional levels is probably possible as well. So you might talk a little bit, um, Eduardo, about kind of that journey from where we were a long time ago to why have we been successful at saying with these herds, we don't want to deal with it at all. So we eliminate it out of there. Yeah, you made a very good point that in sodic pneumonia and uh, on mycoplasma how pneumonia, how the producers and as well practitioners, they, they don't want to deal with that uh, insotic portion of the infection. It's just to start thinking how to eliminate, eradicate the pathogen. I've been, I've been involved in this uh, journey for 20 years since uh, I joined uh, University of Minnesota as a PhD student working on mycoplasma honeymoney and trying to generate all the information that we needed at that time to start changing a little bit the game, it, instead of dealing with this exotic part, of just trying to, to do something on the farm, just to, to, mit to mitigate the impact of mycoplasma, start working on all the information needed at that time, to start thinking on the next step that is elimination. So I'm talking about persistence of the infection, dynamic of the infection, uh, and as well, if, uh, if we have difference on mycoplasma, mycoplasma uh, uh, I mean, uh, genetic difference in mycoplasma, that kind of thing. So we, we start putting all the epidemiology uh, characteristics or epidemiology information that we needed at that time. So I've been a uh, witness of uh, all these changes. So now we have an industry that they know a lot about uh, mycoplasma honeymoney and how to eliminate mycoplasma honeymoney based on all the information I was talking about. And remember, persistence was the question number one at that time is uh, for how long the micro, uh, an animal, a gill, for example, was able to shed mycoplasma because that was the main principle for mycoplasma elimination. Knowing for how long mycoplasma is shed by a gill, that would be uh, the question number one to start designing a hair closure for mycoplasma elimination. So we know that shedding was, uh, we don't know that time, but we learned that it was 240 days. So for that reason, hair closure was set at 200, at least 240 days. And that was just the beginning. And after that, we start 
kind of having more questions. And, and so the, the, the knowledge gap list was very long. So we, we, we start working with every single question. And, and I'm saying we, because we were very, I mean, many people doing this, uh, university, industry, practitioners, uh, a lot of people that were really interested to, to start working in this next step for myco, mycoplasma control and eventual elimination. Yeah. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. And there's been a lot of work that's been done to look at, uh, let's say, um, filling in those gaps, as you described it, right? Knowledge gap exists. We do some research and we learn, um, which inevitably opens up more questions. But you've worked recently, Eduardo, with a group that's tried to kind of put all of those learnings together and try to like set up a one-stop shop, one location for a summary of our knowledge of mycoplasma elimination, eradication. You want to talk a little bit about that project? Oh, yeah. Um, as you said, um, a lot of knowledge, a lot of information, uh, and a lot of experience. Many people applying all these new knowledge in different ways, but everybody going to the same direction. So um, working at that time, we started this idea when uh, I was working at, at Bering and Ingelheim. So we were having all these interaction with these uh, universities. And and so we started working with uh, a lab with University of Minnesota so, so for more than 10 years, and as well working with practitioners, people in, um, from trying clinics. And so we decided to put this tool that is a web page where we have all this information in a very dynamic way where you start clicking and you start learning about the process. So you, you want to eliminate the mycoplasma. This is the roadmap. So this is the journey you need to start for a very clear beginning where you need to justify why you want to do it and you, know, you start designing the tool. So, so you start from there and you finish to day 280 or something like that where you are very close to elimination. So everything in between is included in this tool where you start clicking and you start taking uh, like a subway. So you start uh, on station one and you want to get to your destination that is mycoplasma eradication. So that's the tool. So putting all this knowledge. So it's a digital tool. So we learn a lot how to, to do. So we, we work with experts on these kind of tools. And as well, of course, we work with uh, more than 25 people, um, um, experts and people that they have been working and doing and, and being very smart in how to um, apply all this information in the field and being very successful mm -hmm. on mycoplasma elimination. So, so we, we, we put all this um, um, information and um, people participation and experience in this one tool. Will, uh, will there be example protocols on this website, Eduardo, for a producer who's interested in, in eradicating mycoplasma or eliminating it from their individual farm? Can they go there and find actual like templates uh, or examples of, of protocols that have been successful? Yes. If you are on, on one station and that should be how to define the day zero. So for example, there is a protocol there and as well, there are tables, sample size tables you, you, you can use just to have the right sample size, for example. And as well, you want to have all the papers, all the scientific information that you need to, to back up all the things that we are saying in that very chapter of that station. So, yeah, to your point, um, so we were able to hang up all these uh, pieces like uh, templates, tables, papers. And, and protocols and everything. And, and, and the beauty of this is not just um, um, the main contributors that is Dr. Maria Peters, Dr. Amanda Sponja, myself, is 25 plus people um, really um, sharing everything, templates, um, papers and everything. 
And it sounds like, um, you know, you have a nice combination, Eduardo, of uh, university researchers, people that are working on the, the basic science of this, but then also people that work in pig barns every day, more on the applied side of it. So you've got knowledge that's kind of filtered through the practical lens of people working with pigs every day. And you can see in real time, essentially, what are, what are the, the leaders of our industry thinking about when they think of mycoplasma management? That's the beauty of this, a perfect balance between academia, practice, and as well, a very large group of people really enthusiastic and on, on, on having been successful on, on all these mycoplasma elimination programs. And as I understand it, Eduardo, the tool is free to utilize. You don't need a special, you know, membership or access code, anything like that. This is something everybody listening can go out and access. Would you mind kind of sharing uh, wh where can someone go to find this tool? If they're listening and they're saying, I want to I want to read more, learn more, where do they go? Yeah, this is a free tool, as you mentioned. And, and um, you can access the tool uh, is the Mycoplasma Eradication Roadmap. Please contact uh, the University of Minnesota, Dr. Maria Peters, so she can provide um, the link and everything needed, but it's really easy going. You don't need a special code or something like that. You get the link, just click it, and you are ready to go. Yeah, well, I know, um, Eduardo, you've worked a long time on mycoplasma, and the University of Minnesota has worked a long time on bringing science to practice, right? It's a, it's a theme of the layman conference that we go to every year. So I really appreciate your efforts, Eduardo, and, and the folks at the University of Minnesota. And I know Beringer Ingelheim was a big supporter of this project as well. I appreciate all of you collaborating to make this available to producers. Yeah, no, thank you very much. And, and, and another very interesting thing is, is interacting with other universities. So we have uh, Iowa State University, we, we have Ghent University, we have other universities in, in, even in Europe. And, and yeah, that, that's the beauty is just connecting all these uh, um, Michael Plan Money expert universe, uh, just putting in one click in one web page. Excellent. Thank you very much, Eduardo, for coming on the podcast and sharing that with our audience. Thanks. Thanks to the audience. Thank you and, and all the organizing. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you very much. Well, we couldn't do it, Eduardo, without our audience. So thank you for tuning in. If you haven't checked out the website, please go to swinehealthblackbelt.com uh, and check it out. Um, and please subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already so that you get this episode, but also every episode that we put out each Friday. For Dr. Eduardo Fano, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thank you so much for joining us and please have a great rest of your day. Hey everybody, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E N-E-T-I-X dot com.